Good morning. The Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will keep you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison who, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I will tell you them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol, Extol him, all peoples. Great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. The epistle reading is found in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died in sin to sin still live in it? We do not know all that, that all of it, us have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a res resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we might no, no longer be enslaved, enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now we have died with Christ. We believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, you are my beloved son. Thank you and well pleased. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him, 
And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus came to be baptized. Now, it's interesting, just before that, John has been telling those who were listening to him that, uh, well, they were snakes and vipers. Well, who warned them about the coming wrath? Now, we understand John the Baptist to be the one who is really the last of the Old Testament prophets. And he is preparing Jesus' way. And he's declared that when Jesus comes, the one mightier than he, who he's not worthy to even unlatch the thong of his sandal, that uh, he will baptize with the Spirit and with fire and will remove the chaff, that useless stuff. But the grain himself, he will take into his heavenly kingdom, his granary, his place of preservation. Interesting. The John sees him immediately that oh, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. This is not what I expected. He who is mightier than I says I should baptize him. And so he is hesitant to do that. And yet Jesus says it's necessary for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Notice he says, for us to fulfill all righteousness. Interesting. John fulfills righteousness by baptizing Jesus who is sinless. What's the connection? You see, what's really happening here is that Jesus is fulfilling the Isaiah text in 41 and 61, where as a suffering servant, he is coming forth to be anointed, to be the anointed one, if you would, so that he might take our place. And so in all humility, he stands with us, with the sinners that were being baptized by John confessing their sins. Jesus is anointed, ordained, if you would, for this service, this work of the Father, to save mankind, to stand in his place. Now, I know that uh, we poor sinners, we confess and we've been baptized, but do we realize that we continually go back to our baptism with each and every confession of our sins? We go back to that moment in time of cleanliness before God? That's why we are to speak our and confess our sins before God. It means we understand that we're not worthy of what we're receiving because we're not. We are poor sinful beings. You know, it's interesting that uh, as you grow older, you realize that you are even more sinful and that the plans and the ideas that you have just don't work out. And you just kind of limp along, if you would. 
And when you start to look death in the face, it becomes a terror. Now, why should it be? It's because we poor sinful beings carry sin in us and we know how horrid this thing is. And if you have, don't know how horrid it is, all you have to do is look at it. Something that has been created for eternity dies and rot sets in. That's it. And so mankind without a savior, that's all he has to look at. And he's hoping, well, I hope there's not a, a judgment day and even more punishment. And some completely deny it and say, oh, it doesn't exist. But you've been baptized. You've taken that act of righteousness. You've done what you've been commanded to do to show that you actually believe those words. And it is to that that you can go back to when the, the doubt and the fear start assailing you. And say, but I'm baptized. I am connected to Christ. His death, his resurrection. I'm not worthy, but he is. And it's his worthiness that counts. Because he is my savior. And I belong to him. You know, it's so easy over time to get discouraged. To look at the bad and not see the good. To not see that we stumble forward in our life. But we accomplish things through Christ. And that the things that we do, Christ does through us. His Holy Spirit living in us moves us to do the things that otherwise we wouldn't do. The things God wants done. And really the question is, should we take credit for that righteousness? No, I don't think so. I think that, that our sinfulness will lead us in the wrong direction if we do that. I believe that what we need to continue to understand is that we are poor sinful beings. When I run into a person who's having problems and doubts, I readily tell them, thank God. At least I know that I'm not by myself. Understanding that I know that I'm a poor, miserable sinner too. And that if it wasn't for the grace of God, I would be a total and complete loss. Now, God has blessed me in so many ways, and he has blessed you in so many ways. But don't become discouraged. That's why Jesus says, be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of life. So it doesn't stop with death. Most of you know that Diane's mom died here on Christmas Eve. And I've heard so many people tell me, oh, that's, that's so sorry, so sad. Well, yeah, there's grief because we love her, but she received a wonderful Christmas present. She got heaven, and we know that. We know that because she was baptized, that she confessed her sins, that she confessed Christ. So trusting in Christ's promises, and they've always kept. God doesn't say one thing and do another. Read your text for today. Yes, he is a consuming fire of wrath for that which is sinful. But he is one who forgives our sins and cleanses us from all our iniquities. When we run to him instead of away from him. And that's what our baptism is all about. It's about being connected with him. 
that we should trust his words and do those things we know that he wants us to do. Not led necessarily by our emotions. There's a very easy thing to have happen to you there in that, you know, where is God in all this misery? Well, he's right there helping you, giving you the support and the assurance that it doesn't end this way, that this too will pass. And that we are baptized. We are heirs because of Christ. And that's what his baptism means more than anything else, that he joined us to be our substitute. You hear the Apostle John talking about John when he says, when he saw, when John saw Jesus, says, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hmm. The Lamb of God, the sacrifice for sin. God sacrifices his only begotten son for you and me. And the way that we join him in his kingdom is through baptism and through faith. Through the sacrament, baptism is how we join the church. And it is through the sacrament of Holy Communion that we sustained in the church. And it is the word preached in our ears, the word that was made flesh and lived among us and took our place. That word is the sure word of God and the thing that we are to listen to, to trust. So how do they connect our baptism in Christ? It is how we become part with him. It is through baptism, which he ordained, which he turned around and said, go and baptize, making disciples. And saying also, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And so as we look at the Lord's baptism today, we are reminded of the assurance we have that we are saved because he took our place. He stood there in the Jordan River, received a baptism by John, and then coming out of the waters, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, who as a form of a dove came down and landed upon him and heard the words, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he made it possible for God to say that about you and me. This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Now that's good news. I know that life may cause you to doubt, to fear. And on top of that, the fear is sinful because... There's no need for my sin for me to fear. But it is part of my human being of being simultaneously saint and sinner. And I can say with Luther, thank God there are others like me. I thought I was the only one. Amen. The peace of God with path is all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith until life everlasting. Let us depart in his peace. Amen.
are taken to support the ministry of St. John's here at, in Salt Lake City in Akubo, South Sudan, and through the Synod to the churches throughout the world. The latest problems we've had with uh, extra expenses due to the snow and the storm, uh, repairs, that type of thing, uh, you're encouraged as you have been blessed to bless us also. Thank you.